in the last 25 to 30 plus years, one of the things that is still uh, fundamentals to all of what we do today is the software development life cycle. The reason why is because it helps us get an understanding of how we create products. So most companies will do some sort of a process that is very similar to this. So let's start it off. Now, the SDLC does not talk about the beginning of things, of how or where idea comes from. So an idea is basically just uh, some sort of a thought to create something to go solve a specific problem. For example, uh, how do I get from point A to point B? So the notion is, yes, I can walk, uh, I can go on a horse, or eventually it becomes where, how do I get from point A to point B at a much faster rate, a uh, much safer rate, right? So those are a solution to specific problem. So ideas can come from anywhere. Uh, it can be because uh, of a you know, future-driven outlook. An idea could come from anybody, any department, uh, any sort of ways. So the SDLC is broken down into six different phases. The first one is basically the analysis level. Phase two is design. Uh, phase three is implementation. Phase four is testing and then deployment and then maintenance. So to make it easy for uh, us to comprehend and understand each of the phases, we're going to use a comparison. So the comparison I'm making here is between uh, making a cake in a bakery and then making a call. And then also then we talk about software application. So before we talk about that, uh, in the world of the software industry, there are a couple of things we need to understand. So one is what is a product? So a product is similar to how uh, you have a car is a product, a cake is a product. So for a product in the software industry, it, is, it could be application that gets installed on your phone. Uh, it could be the OS, operating system that runs your phone. It could be a uh, online website that you purchase from, for example, Amazon. Now the features are things that you uh, interact with on the specific application. So a feature of a car is basically uh, a steering wheel that you can control, that's a feature. Uh, a speedometer on there, that's a feature. Uh, and then if you look from a cake, what's a feature of a cake, right? You got the, uh, whether the shape of it might be a feature, uh, the taste of it might be a feature, multiple layers of the cake might be a feature. Now for software industry, for applications, the feature are simply, uh, you could think about it as shopping cart. That's a feature. Uh, ability to take credit card. That's another feature. Uh, and then you look into simply logins. When you log into the application, that's also a feature. Now that we understand some of the basics of it all, let's take a look at the comparison. So let's start with the analysis stage. If you are going to make a cake, you are baking a cake, right? The idea behind it is do you have the skill do, you know what kind of type of cake is going to be do you have the time what's the cost of the ingredients right what are the tools that you need for it what's the taste what's the color so that's cake so you need to get an idea of those things so if you are baking a wedding cake for example you're now talking to uh, your clients which will be your uh, groom or, or, or bride right so they may give you a specification of what they want the cake to be. That's where the analysis and uh, requirements get. So you may take it down. For the cake business, it's real simple. I write it down, simply jot it down on a piece of paper, right? Uh, for the car, same thing, you look at the car. Now, you know, what type of car are we going to manufacture? What's the engine? Uh, what's the parts that needs to be in there? Do we have all the parts? Do we have the tools? Do we have the skills to make, do it? Do we have the people to do the work? The time, the type, the cost, uh, of course, you know, what features do you want on the car? Is it a sport car uh, with a, you know, a hot top uh, or convertible, for example, and then simple feature like a color. Now, when it comes to software applications uh, or website for, for that matter, so same thing is, is applied here. Do we have the skill? Do we have the people who have the skill to do the work? Do we have the time? to even take on this prop, to build this prop. Uh, what's the cost to us? What tools do we have? Do we have the servers to host this? Do we have the uh, necessary components to build the software? Uh, what feature is included in all this? So you want to get a rough idea in this. Now in the software development uh, cycle here, because this is the analysis programming stage, 
uh, depending on your organization. Some organization may be very detailed. So this is the difference between what I consider as a waterfall uh, and versus an agile wall. The next stage is the design stage. Now in this, again, we're gonna look at example for the cake. What ingredients are we gonna put in here, right? We're designing this cake now, we're gonna make this cake. How many layers is involved in here? What's the shape like? Uh, what's the recipe we need to? Uh, what's the texture of it? Now the shape comes to the mind because we need to have the tool to make the shape, right? Uh, again, if you have a multiple layered cake, what are the things that you needed to hold it? What's the design looking like, okay? Now for a car, uh, you know, how do you design in terms of the car? The shape is the matter, what color it is, what transmission you put together, what are the tires you're gonna do? You know, this is the design in order to meet our specific prop, right? Now, when we look at software application uh, for that matter, then there is a difference in here is that there are multiple things that we have to consider. One, really simply, there is a front end and there is a back end, and then there is a way for us to capture and store data, persistent data, right? So the front end is something that you interact with daily, right? If I open up Amazon, that's a front end, a website. What I see is my front end. Excel, for that matter, when you open up Excel application, that's the front end, right? Now, the back end, or sometimes we refer to the middle layer, the back end is where processing happen, right? You take some input from the user and then you process it. A real simple, for example, calculation, right? A calculator for that matter, right? If you take a calculator, I input my numbers, I do uh, my simple calculation, I say five plus five, and I hit equals, right? And when you do that, then behind the scene, the software has to process this, what does five plus five means? And then it processes and brings you back the data. Okay, so the middle layer, or we call it as a back end, is where it, all the processing happens. Now along the way is this notion of that sometimes we have to store data. We have to persist the data from day to day. After I turn off the computer, I want my results to stay there. Where do we store those things? So this is what we call a database. Uh, in the old world, it's kind of like a, a file that sits in a folder uh, in a cabinet, right? So the simple thing is there is a database to handle all these things. Uh, how does it know your shopping cart? You can put stuff in your shopping cart and then the next day you turn on the computer and it's still there. Because it stores all those things in a specific um, location, which is what we usually call a database or a storage uh, mechanism. Now in terms of that, then the front end, there are specific uh, tools to do that. There are specific languages they can use to do that. Uh, and then the Back end is the same thing too in a database. There's multiple different databases you can deal with. You have, you know, SQL Server, Oracle, MySQL, and a bunch of things that's out there. So in terms of the design, we have to figure out what all this is. The look and feel of the UI, of the user interface, the look and feel of the front end. Uh, and then the, you know, how do we process data? What's the code look like? There's some design that needs to happen here. This is where your architect sits. Uh, and then we get into our next phase, which is called implementation. So implementation for a cake is real simple. This is where we're mixing the dough. This is where we're now baking the cake, all right? For the car, well, this is where we're manufacturing the engine, the parts, and then we're putting them all together. We're assembling the car. Now in the application world, in the software world, this is where we have people that are start writing code, okay? They are people that are creating the UI, the user interface. Uh, and then we're also creating the database container to store the data. Once we've done all that, the next phase uh, is the testing phase. So for a cake, it is taste testing, right? Does the cake look well? Does it look kind of eyeballing it? Maybe you want to take a, a, a sample or a bite of it, right? Now for a car, we're testing the doors. Can the car start? Does it go through uh, a crash approval rating? Is it good enough? Uh, for software side, then does my code work? Does the application work? Does it take my input? Does it produce the right output? Uh, does it do the, what I expect it to do? Does it solve the problem that we want? Once we've done all that stuff, once we've gone through our testing, the next phase is what we call deployment. Now for the cake, think about deployment in terms of how do I get it from my kitchen? I bake it, I got it all ready to go. How do I get it from there to my storefront, right? You probably have a, a push card that you put load your push card on and push it to the front, or it might, you know, you might hand hold this and move it to the front, for example. Uh, and then you may also cut it into smaller pieces so you can uh, sell it uh, individually. Deployment for a car is simply basically, 
I got it done, I got it assembled, it's in my factory, how do I get it from my factory to my dealership, right? So you gotta consider transportation, how do I move it over there? You know, how do I put it on a, load it on a, a transportation uh, truck, for example? Uh, how do I now showcase it uh, in the store? And then for software, it is very similar too. Once you've written all this application, all your code and tested it, where does it go? How does it get to a point where a normal users like you and me uh, get to it? For example, Amazon, uh, for example, Netflix, uh, Facebook, all those features, for example, your uh, iPhone, right? Phones, application gets on your phone. So let's talk about that. So there are instances where we need to put it onto a server somewhere and then for a uh, users to go download it. This is very similar to applications that you download on your phone. On your computer, it's similar too. We have what we call a Windows application, right? It's a generic term basically says, I'm downloading my application onto my computer and I'm running from there. An example would be uh, PowerPoint, Excel, uh, certain application you know that you have to run. Usually it has what we call an install uh, application you need to install. Um, the other thing that we see is what about the websites, Amazon, the Netflix, and all those things in there? How does that work? Somehow we have to get the code, the application we've written now to be on a specific location. In this instance, usually it's a server, a machine that outside people can get, uh, can interact with. So it's called a server. We usually publish it into what we call a production server. And from there, then people can uh, use it. So the whole deployment is basically how do I get or what mechanism do I get it from point A from developer's machine or from tester's machine to move the code onto the server uh, and then have people uh, assessing it from the outside world. So that's deployment, okay? Now the last thing in there is what we call maintenance. Now for the kick, well, since it's a one-off, the kick goes out there, that you don't have that much maintenance, right? Uh, possibly the maintenance in here is you're getting feedback from your clients, whether it's good or bad, so you can you know, get it and uh, try to implement it in your next cake that you build. For the call, uh, there's two different things. One is feedback, you know, uh, how do I take my feedback and so that I can put it onto a uh, next year's model. Uh, the other thing is maintenance of the car. How do we maintain the car in terms of uh, services that we, we provide? For software side, so once application has been uh, deployed, right, once it's been out into the masses, so once you use it, I use it, you get feedback. So you get coming in will be, hey, there are things that's not working. We call them defects or bugs, right? Uh, so that's, you have to capture this information. Now that goes back, then we have to fix it. So it's maintenance of the application. Now, feedback in terms of, well, this is great, but can I add this additional feature? For example, when you know, the application that first comes out that uh, Amazon has is all about books, right? So then how do I expand that from books to something else? Now, another example would be uh, the fresh market uh, company uh, that is just across the street from my house. What they initially do is that they have a website. They don't list their product, just they talk about what they have. So you can't purchase online. Now recently, because of the environment, because of the virus, they now went to online website. So you can now purchase stuff online. So again, that's an additional feature you got to add on to what they already have. So that's maintenance. Also maintenance in terms of making sure that my server is up and running 24 seven so people can get access to it. So in a nutshell or in a quick um, explanation, that is the uh, process, that's the fundamentals of all the building blocks of software application. Hopefully this helps, bye.